We've got this new automatic parts loader hooked up to our ST15 here. And I want to show you how easy it is to set it up and load your parts. You program and operate the APL via four tab screens inside the current command section on the control. On these tabs, you answer questions about your specific setup, and then you move the APL arm to teach it the positions it will use during operation. So let's get rolling. Press current commands and navigate to the automatic part loader tab. Here are the four tabbed pages we'll complete. First up is the template page. Here we tell the APL the type of part, if we'll be stacking parts, and if we'll be using one of the existing stock templates or making our own custom template. Next, we'll pick up our part. Arrow to the right to the load part tab. I'll set it to OD grip this raw slug. Then, using the included remote jog handle, I'll bring the APL arm close to my pickup location. If the RAM is over above the machine, a single button push here will bring the RAM to above the table quickly. Now, I use the three APL axes, AU, AV, and AW, to fine tune my position. We jog down in AW. Line up side to side with AU and front to back with AV and grip the part. Then record the position. We'll jog up a little bit and then press move to automatically travel back to above the door. Now we define where the turret and axis should be while the APL is loading parts, so they aren't in the way while we bring the arm down to load the slug. We'll also set our above door location at this stage. This is where the arm will stop and then descend to the chuck. Finally, we'll set our chuck load position. For each of these positions we need to set, we'll make adjustments with the RJH until we're satisfied and then press record. With each of these positions set, our part is ready to load. In our case here, I've already run one of my parts, so I can move on to teaching the APL where to unload the finished part. But if I hadn't, I'd just run my part and then move on to the unload part screen. So now I've got the finished part clamped in the chuck, and I'll arrow to the unload part tab. Here, we'll still be OD gripping, but on this smaller turn diameter. Then like before, I'll use the RJH again to move the axes until I'm happy with my gripper swap location. This is where the gripper rotates to load the new blank after unloading the finished part. Then I'll set the chuck pickup location. With both of those set, it's one more trip back to set our table drop-off location. We've put our completed part back on the table and we're finished teaching the APL where to pick up and drop off. Now we'll move to the Run Job tab, where we tell the APL the total number of parts we want to run, monitor the status of the current job, and enter a couple of override values if necessary. Now that everything is programmed, here are the four steps to run the APL automatically. We save our APL program, select the part program, then turn on APL mode by pressing Insert, and press Cycle Start. We've got another step-by-step -step video that walks you through every detail of getting your APL set up and running. But hopefully this quick summary gives you a good idea of just how easy it will be to get your APL loading your parts. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.